know, you, what you said, you talk the talk. And, like, today we want to talk a lot about, like, sacrifices. Uh, yeah, I've had to uh, sacrifice a lot to be here. <laughs> uh, it's been really tough the past, uh, past few months. I've been dealing with a, a lot of injuries and stuff coming in late nights and early mornings and long practice alone and a lot of lonely hours in the pool. I can't really run on the on the ground, so yeah, a lot of sacrifice. People define success a lot of different ways, but for you in particular, what is what does that look like? What's me? Uh, I, I want to be the greatest ever at the decathlon. Uh, and it's more like like 9,300 something like that. That'll be the the best mark in history for any event. Uh, based on world athletics, so that's my main goal for my career. What in your mind made you think that you could be the greatest? So Rutledge the winner there in that first section at 9-11, and then Noble at 9-7. I, I don't know if I can be the greatest, but I might as well say it, right? Go for it. Maybe I'll score 9,000. That's still amazing, right? So why not set the bar as high as you can possibly go and see where you land from there, right? I'm very familiar with cross-country and track. I've made a couple films for those sports. Um, but when Tristan invited me to his uh, Nike Outdoor Nationals decathlon, I was just immediately blown away. It was it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. Um, so of course I took it, and, and not only was it a new experience for him, but I wanted to see what the decathlon world had to offer, and I wanted to document it in the realest way possible. How you gonna present? I got feelings, but you having a man. No, God, this wasn't the plan. Now I'm caught in the scram. All these talks about sin. No, this isn't my gym. What I was sharing with you wasn't a scam. Now I'm going quiet because you're getting down with your man. I'm the only one who got slammed. I'm evaporated. I'm so tired. I've been doing nothing but napping lately. All these fools, I'm a poet. I be hearing nothing but snapping lately. Hey, you've been losing passion lately, trying to get fresh. You best dress. You feel impressive with your message, and you feel me not aggressive with your stepping. The feelings are hot strings in your section, baby. I ain't like an angel to me, but this ain't heaven, baby. You tell me that I'm posing fake and sad. Would you like a walk? It was, it was kind of surreal. You know, I had never been, well, I had been to Hayward Field, but I'd never run there. And the last time I was there, uh, I was just taking a summer trip and I had a broken leg at that point. So I couldn't really, you know, do a few laps around the track yes. or hang out at the infield. Got him. Man, just be a normal person. <laughs> You're so weird. We piss each other off a lot because we're so similar. And we're always, you know, he's always mad at me. I'm mad at him for something. But at the end of the day, um, he's my biggest supporter and my best friend. And I uh, don't know what I'd do without him. Season has been like that, not being able to train or do anything. So I just kind of do what you can do, the little shakeouts every, every time you get out of the car and, you know, go into the track the day before to try and get some strides and stuff like that. Trying to get all American ship status. You think it's the best? Of the world. <laughs> I'll burn into the can. That's it. You look at like, look at the camera. Look. <laughs> Let's go to Waffle Hut. It's two miles. Waffle Hut. I love missing the gravy. That's my favorite food of all time. But. What's the reason behind that? Because it tastes good as hell, that's why. I love this gravy. That's the best. Uh, probably seeing the practice. Like going on the field and like actually doing something. They have, they have a team one today? It's the practice field, not the actual one. It's always, it's always feels good to see a fish in water and to see a person find their people. And these are his people. This is his water. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Athletes all competing in this one area, and you really 
It was almost like a, like a spectacle in a sense. It felt like home, honestly. I mean, that's where every track person wants to be is Hayward. That's, that's the Mecca. So, you know, felt like, uh, felt like that's where I was meant to be. Why are you doing this? Good job. Why'd you do that? Look at your back. It's all red. Do what? Why'd you do the sit-ups? Because I'm trying to get started. Okay. I'm doing great. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, actually, I slept great. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I'm, maybe, mm, no, no, I'm all good, thank you. No, I'm all good. Uh-uh. Thank you. Let me do, bye-bye. On the first day of the competition, I, I noticed that Tristan got really quiet. The morning of the competition, uh, I didn't wake up with a great feeling. And I kind of felt weird about what we were doing, what we were about to go do. Usually I don't get nervous before competitions, but um, before nationals, you know, I wasn't able to train and prepare like I normally would. So it kind of just felt like I was just showing up. A lot of the athletes, they, they train and they work so hard for one specific moment. All of Tristan's hard work, all of that, just was into this 100 meter, just out the gate. Then the race started, and I had a poor reaction to the gun, and I didn't feel like I could accelerate up to my top speed like I normally could, and I kind of just got left, you know. It ran like 11.7 or something, so it's really not, it's not that good. And yeah, it was just kind of a poor race, you know, a little disappointing. Officially, 256 points are underway. Frederick Ford, the start picks off. Terrell Jimenez, second place. Under 20 champions. Try to get our stride and long jump, and no nothing was fitting. You know, I had my mark, it's whatever, how many feet, and I would go from it, and I wouldn't be. I couldn't tell whether I was too far or too close to the board and nothing felt right. Um, and that was that was a challenge to begin with. So I had to go with my coach at the competition and try to find a mark that worked. And I, you know, I wasn't running fast, so everything was different. Didn't feel well. So my takeoff was short, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, first attempt was terrible. Second attempt was below average. And then I think my third attempt, I just like fouled or something. I just ran out of it because it didn't feel right. So yeah, not a great competition for that. There were times where I could just see Tristan, I don't, he, he just seemed like he either wasn't all there or he was just trying to be there, you know? I don't know if he was completely prepared, but he was definitely trying his hardest to be um, locked in for the competition. You know, I was just like, might as well just go, you know, throw on the throwing shoes, chalk up and go launch the shot as far as I can try to get as many points as I could. It became really obvious that Tristan wasn't doing his, his best. Um, but the last two events, I think it kind of weighed him down in shot put. And his first couple of throws weren't bad, but they could have been better. And I think it came to a point where we, we really needed to just take a break and assess what was going on. And so he had a whole conversation with his coach, Corey Reed. He was trying to tell me to use my left arm a lot more. You know, you have to kind of hang it forward when you're throwing and then really throw it towards the end of your throw. And I have, a, historically, I've had a problem with that, but it was just stuff like that. Just trying to use my body as best as I can, you know, 5'10", 145 pounds. So it's not a lot of weight to throw that shot put very far, but we make it work. And I ended up hitting a PR, but you know, you can't really gain crazy, crazy amounts of points on, and shot put on somebody unless they're throwing like five or six feet shorter than you, which, you know, it doesn't happen in Nike Nationals. So it was just kind of 
trying to do as best as I could, make up as much of the points as I can. But other than that, my plan was to just um, hopefully go absolutely nutty in high jump and hit a six inch PR or something somehow, and then try to get through a 400 in under 50 seconds, and that would maybe kind of put me in the contention. Moving into high jump, um, I was feeling pretty terrible. I was like, how am I gonna get through this? You know, I'm taking my run through, just trying to figure out where my mark is, moving it forward, moving it back, moving it left, moving it right, trying to figure out what felt normal. You know, not being able to practice the events kind of difficult to, to have consistency when you're doing your run up. So um, that was a challenge. And then, you know, I had a really, it was interesting. I've never had a moment like this before, but I was, I was running, I was doing my run, my run through. And I just kind of thought back to breaking my leg the year prior. I've never thought about it before. It never even crossed my mind. Whatever, I broke my leg. I have screws in there now. It's not a big deal. But my shins were hurting so bad that I couldn't get it out of my head. Like, I'm going to break my leg again. And I did this run through and I was like, I can't do it. Like, I just, I just stopped. I didn't even jump. And it was totally a mental thing. Like, like what if my leg breaks? You know, I, I would not want to go through that again. And that's the first time I've ever had anything happen like that before. Um, it's always hard for me to stop doing something. Like, that's my main thing, and I can't I can't stop doing whatever I'm doing, whether it be golf or running or the gym or swimming or anything. So for me to to be at high jump thinking, you know, do I continue to do this and, you know, maybe really mess up my leg for and mess up my potentially amazing senior season? Or do I, you know, you know, suck it up and take it on the chin and quit is essentially what I did. To me, it feels like that. It feels like I quit on myself, but I know that it was probably the right decision in the long run, but I'm still having a hard time dealing with that decision to, to get out after the first day. After that happened, we didn't, we didn't really know what was going on. Tristan kind of disappeared for a while and we were just thinking if he was gonna continue the competition or not. I mean, it was one or the other. Um, when we did see him, uh, I mean, after like an hour, he told us that he would be competing in the, the 400, which was the final event for the day. It was kind of just like to make myself feel better, maybe. I was like, you know, if I'm going to quit, then I might as well, you know, finish out the day. You know, it's a 400, whatever. It's a lap around the track. It's not a big deal. So, um, yeah, I just decided to run the 400 to just, you know, close it out after day one. And, just see what I could do. You know, I was running the 400 and I felt felt pretty dejected and I didn't, you know, I got on the starting line, I didn't really want to be there. Um, but I figured, you know, gotta prove to myself that I can do this and that I can at least do the first day. I went and got an MRI of my shin after the fact, you know, the swelling had gone down completely. Um, but there was still a lot of swelling in my bone marrow from, you know, what I was doing. So I'm not sure if I would have broken my leg again or if I would have gotten stress fractures or whatever I would have done, torn a muscle in my calf somewhere. But uh, I definitely would have been a lot worse for wear if I would have continued. I don't even really think of it as a loss. I think of it as a forfeit because he was in so much pain coming in but he has so much heart we couldn't talk about of towing the line and starting. And it looked there for a second like it might work out for him, like it did at the California Winter Championships and Arcadia. But the level of competition here is set so high that you can't just be Tristan. You can't just be an exceptional athlete. You have to have trained. You have to have... You have to have honed yourself and peaked for competition. You can't just show up having not run on the ground but for five, six days and 15 months and expect to beat the best in the country.
Start working. This is gonna feel. This is might feel weird if you've never messed with your feet or toes before. It will be. Have you ever stuck your fingers in between your toes? Yeah. Okay. Has anybody else? <laughs> okay. okay. But this needs to happen. Actually, your toes are not tight. Okay. At all. That's good. No, that's great. No, I don't feel tough enough. I feel like I should keep going, but. Now you can't jump at all. Is that worth it? No, that's why I stopped. Yeah, I'd rather just be 40. Able. His 400 was, what, terrible. four seconds slower than Yeah, like 53 is terrible. You just need to love your feet. Okay. You're tight, actually, right here. Mm -hmm. We had a long conversation about this just the other day. But she was talking about the fact that she's not a certain anyone that's doing a more holistic approach to the body and how the body is connected. And so the injuries that track athletes get from this overwork often stems from the fact that they're not taking care of their feet. It makes sense. I would spend the rest of the summer strengthening this. But, uh, um, you know, toe tapping with some weight, I'll show you. What else do we do, coach? What are you talking about? What else would we do? Besides drinking. For what? Just for stretching lower half. Uh, hips. Seven way. Crack your toes. Every day. Okay. Okay. And then just work up. Hip uh, rotations. Both sides. This is what I tell people. You can be pissed off. Be pissed off today. Right? Be pissed off today, but understand there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's done. And so the only thing you can do is, what are you going to do different for next season? For me, track is everything I do all the time, so all of my life is always track, 24-7. So for me to have a few weeks off during the summertime where I don't do anything but golf, wonderful. That's what I need, right, for me, but everyone's different. I would say when you come, when you fall short and you're disappointed with yourself, just kind of forget about it for a little while, maybe approach it in the future when you're less hurt, and, you know, hop back on the horse, you know, especially if you're injured, recover, recover, recover. And then get back to training, you know, ramp up slowly and everything, but get there and start doing what you love again because it's important. And even if it's not, even if you're a senior and you didn't win the state championship and, you know, now you're not going to compete in college and you're done running, it's important to go out there and run. Do stuff on your own, you know. You loved it before, you love it now. Just continue to do what you do and try to find the love in it again, you know. From what I know about Tristan, I know he's not going to give up. Um, and, in, and he's gonna push it the next time he comes to Oregon. And even beyond Oregon, when he's doing other competitions or whether he's in the 2028 Olympics, there will be a time where he will surpass 9,000. So it is October of 2015. Tristan and I are driving in the car and he says, Dad, I have my whole life mapped out. And I said, I gotta pull over so you can tell me about this. And I'll save this for you for when you're older. So tell me, Tristan, tell me about your whole life being mapped out. Well, when I'm 12, I'm going to be the, the first kid to be, I'm be the first teenager to be the fastest in the United States. Then once I'm done, I'm going to be the fastest man on earth. Then I'm going to go to Loyola Marymount for college. And then I'm going to be a part-time builder. Wow, that's very cool. I love it. So I'm going to keep this for you as a time capsule. Okay. I love you. But what if your phone breaks? You better uh, put that on Google Drive. Put it on Google Drive? Yeah. Okay. You can do that. Okay. I love you.